I have some thoughts on PR, uh, and I gave it the title, The Revolution Never Happened, because nobody talks at the moment about classical media. Everybody is talking about social media, and that everything's new, and all the things in the media world have changed dramatically, and especially PR is completely different from the things we used to do in the past. Uh, I doubt that, but let's start with the common phrase we have we hear these days from everybody. Print media is dying. Frankfurter Rundschau, bankrupt. Financial Times, service, service unavailable. DAPD, second time bankrupt in a short time. So all, all this classical media is going bankrupt. Even the market leader is losing impact. If you look at the circulation, it's still 2.5 million, but it's going down. Nobody helps print media and classical media from going down. And younger people even are, are turning away from television. So everything is new. So the question is, for startups, why bother with old media? Old media is for elderly people like me, not for young people, not for dynamic people. Old media is for old products. If you make uh, cookie dent, if you want to sell cookie dent, you take the old media, but not for startups. And we are young and innovative, and our target group is online. And let's, let's look for followers on Facebook and social media. We'll do it all, and they will talk to each other about our fantastic program. And that's even cheaper. You do, don't have to invest a lot of money in that. But uh, if you really look at the figures, is this the real picture? And for example, mm -hmm. Heidi Klum has 1.5 million followers on Facebook. Impressive, really impressive. They follow her, but we all know that not all followers get that her news, but 1.5 <coughs> million. You know this guy, Jörg Sheep? Maybe some of them know him. Yeah, he has 1.2 million spectators in a regional TV news, news show. And not worldwide, it's just <laughs> in North Rhine Westphalia. So the, the, the thesis that social media is much more Im impressive and much more effective, could be, uh, could be uh, not so true. Have traditional media really lost their impact? And if you see this graph, they have lost their impact in print. But they have won a lot of people being on the, um, uh, following them on their uh, online, in their online. They have a distribution range in thousands, which is far higher than everything we have. And people not only use traditional media, they also trust in them. This is a study of uh, GPRA, the German uh, Public Relations Agencies Association. And 81 people, 81% uh, of the people still think everything is true which is in their regional day, uh, daily. <coughs> and the journalists are still the decisive gatekeepers. They, every information which has to reach the, the, uh, uh, the uh, public has to go through the editing process and only a small portion of the information filled into the system uh, comes in, it will be relevant media content in the end. But the journalists, and I hope this PowerPoint thing works well, are going into a dilemma. They are under heavy pressure because the amount of information <laughs> is growing dramatically. And because the, the, the impact of uh, the, the traditional media has lost a lot of its re revenues, and that's definitely true. Dailies have lost, uh, lost a lot of their revenues. The editorial capacity, capacity is shrinking. 
Yeah, the, the publishing houses, uh, a lot of publishing houses are cutting down their, um, their manpower. And on the other end, the journalists will have to produce more media content because they have to do also online, not only print. So we have a, a, smaller, a smaller group of people having to do more work because um, uh, the, the revenue streams have uh, went uh, the other way and Google is taking away a lot of advertising money from the classical media. And for people who are doing media relations programs and who want to work on media relations programs, this creates an uh, opportunity because the people, the, the, if journalists have to do more in a shorter time, they have to rely on better material they get. It's much easier today to uh, get working relationship with, the, with editors than it was in, in, uh, in days before because they have to rely on good material they get. And give it edit editors the product, if you give the editors, for example, uh, the possibility to handle your product, to see your product, to really experience it. And uh, if you create interesting stories for them, uh, you have a better chance to get through to the media than in uh, former days when, for example, broad uh, uh, the trade press uh, said, oh no, we do the stories ourselves. And we find out in the last years that uh, journalists more or less rely on, on us to do things. But you have to write things well and ready to use because everything which is not ready to use for the editor is in the waste bin immediately and within seconds. And that's uh, the, the big difference um, is the switch from paper to email. When you, in former days, when we used to send out information to journalists on paper, we had the chance that they read the first five lines. And now the journalist reads just the tagline, and then it's immediately in the, in the waste bin. And what journalists are after is they need exclusive pieces. You, don't, you, you can't do a good job by sending out just press releases. Uh, because they want uh, the, the only possibility for a classical media in print and in, in online to survive is to have exclusive content. So more and more journalists are behind exclusive content because everything which is distributed broad can be obtained from the web for free and that's not the uh, a comp competitive thing for, the, uh, for journalists. And so more and more you have to tailor articles to the need of specific media to get through, to talk to the journalist before, what do you like, what do you need, and then uh, uh, pre prepare it. And this uh, all is one yeah, motto, help journalists to do their jobs. Uh, that's uh, uh, the, 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 the core of the business. Uh, in former years, uh, PR people had the, uh, had the image that they did this uh, dining, whining, womanizing. Uh, you go with journalists and, uh, and uh, 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 to, to expensive restaurants and all this stuff. Uh, it has never worked as the image was. But in these days, if you just want uh, call a journalist and say, let's have lunch tomorrow more, uh, tomorrow noon. He says, I have no time. Uh, I buy me a lunch box and everything is okay. <coughs> and uh, uh, you won't uh, get a journalist uh, even to, to sit with you down for dinner because he says, in the evening I want to be with my family. But if you say, I have an interesting story, I have did it and you get it exclusively, he will listen to you. Let's look at an example we did for our company. Uh, the Zach made keyboard for the iPad. It was the first, one of the first keyboards for the iPad with Bluetooth connection and its uh, independent power pack. It's still on the market. It's sold in, in Europe today uh, through Logitech. 
So the product Zach made is not is no longer there, but Logitech uh, has obtained a license from the company. What we did, it, it sounds simple, but uh, it's, uh, I always say, sometimes you think uh, is advertising is, is art, where you do creative things, and 90% of, of, of PR work is just proper craftsmanship, that you really prepare information and prepare stories ready to use for the journalists. We create just a comprehensive media pack with ready to use text and photos. We checked our mailing list very thoroughly. That's what we try to avoid. It's, it's so easy and so, so cheap to send around 500 press releases to 500 uh, people. But people will get annoyed if they get the, the fifth press release from you saying, uh, 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 which they feel is nonsense, uh, then you will not go to the spam filter directly, but to their, uh, uh, to their, uh, they will put, put on the delete button, put on the delete button just when they see something from you. We offered test samples to the editors via email, via individual emails, not to everyone, not to 500, mm -hmm. but to 50, 60 journalists, and we made telephone contacts with selected editors. And what we also did, we offered the Zach made for price draws uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in magazines. Some of the results, just a short glance, I don't, uh, it's just, was iMac Live. We have some more examples, but uh, this product has been featured by a lot of, um, lot of media, and it was a success. It was so successful that Logitech uh, decided to buy, uh, buy the license. Another case, I, I just want the, the, you may say, okay, this Zach made was a unique product and a, a, an innovative product. But this also works with products which are more or less me too. Uh, it's the Katinka smartphone cases. And there are a lot of smartphone cases uh, in the market. Uh, there are a lot of <coughs> brands. Um, <coughs> it, it was a start, used to want, uh, want to start for uh, company <coughs> situated in Brandenburg. And they started selling protective films for iPhones. And then they designed their own range of smartphone covers. And today they uh, have, are their own brand um, of all kinds of smartphone accessories. And now the, it's, uh, they are even present with media Zaton and other big retailers. Also, we had this intensive contact with editors. For example, this uh, on these Christmas pages. You have to be there in August. They are sending to the uh, journalists who are really uh, struggling to get the Christmas present pages uh, together and have all, also always need some you know, n nice products. So, but you have to be there in August, mid of August. If you come with some Christmas products in September, they say, oh, the pages are already closed. So we have, uh, and uh, the, this company was really, um, very, we were very successful in placing these things. The content, oh, uh, it's, yeah, you, <laughs> you look at it, it's, it's, it's not looking perfect. So something happened, uh, converting to PowerPoint, don't mind. So uh, and this was <laughs> on the front page of Yahoo. There, therefore, it's uh, this huge number of contacts. But we had through this uh, month between two hundred and uh, between sixty and two thousand and two hundred thousand contacts. And it was really on a small budget. It was uh, a low uh, four-digit budget. <coughs> and. Uh, with Katinka, what we also did is a big, uh, we used the big advantage of startup companies. Uh, startup companies have one great advantage over established companies. They 
But there's always a founder or a group of founders who have an idea who follow that idea. And uh, people want to read uh, stories about people and not about companies and figures and, and business plans and so on. And I can also all, only give the advice, be prepared to tell your story. Be prepared to, uh, to really go in personally as a person. The Katinka story was quite interesting. It's a, a young mother living on parts here. <coughs> and uh, she got an iPhone as a present, as a birthday present from her parents. And she looked for protective film, protective cover for the protect, uh, to protect this present. And she found the Z invisible shield and she uh, ordered at it in, uh, in the US. She didn't find it in the, on the European market. And uh, because the freight costs were so high, she didn't uh, uh, order one, she did order 10. And said, okay, let's try to sell the, the nine I don't need on eBay. And uh, she got rid of it immediately. And then she uh, sold the surplus on eBay and uh, she found out that she was the first to offer this stuff in, in, in uh, Germany and Europe. And they, she made a business out of it. It's an interesting story, but um, even that, uh, it's only a little chance that a journalist stumbles upon your story. It may be interesting as it is, sometimes things happen that uh, uh, you are sitting in a restaurant or in a pub and uh, a journalist is there and you tell the story and says, okay, it's a wonderful story. But it's not the normal way it works. You have to prepare, to be prepared, to prepare your story in a ready-to-use format and also to bring it to the right journalist. And you have to fi find the right tonality when approaching journalists. Uh, what, what, what journalists are hating is if you want to really sell things to them. You have to be convincing and you have to be, w it has to really to be your story and not a story somebody sells. And uh, with Katinka it worked quite well. She was on RTL. Then uh, uh, in several magazines. And we had also uh, 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 also already um, some requests from talk shows, TV and radio talk shows. And uh, then Karen Becker fell in love with an American and, uh, and decided to, uh, to relocate to 